Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to day 18, I believe, of Vlogmas. And today we're doing just a chatty vlog. We're gonna sit down and talk about my TBR list, my to be read. It is a doozy. Plus, of course, there's Kindle and audiobooks. So let's start with what I'm reading right now. First up is Love Light Farms by B.K. Borison, and it is a smutty romance novel uh, that I actually bought for myself last year and I read last Christmas. It's a Christmassy kind of romance and it was so good and so cute and decently spicy, um, which I actually was surprised. I enjoyed and um, it's so I'm rereading it this year because it is so Christmassy and so sweet and really good and I just wanted to reread it. So I am on page 31. So that's where I am with this current read. Then we've got my audiobooks. So I am currently listening to one audiobook. It is called The Enneagram Guide to Waking Up by Beatrice Chestnut and Urania Paez. And it is all about the Enneagram, which is something I am starting a second business on. If you're curious about that, you can check out the link in the description. Um, but so far I'm really enjoying this. It's going through each type with a lot of specificity. So even though I'm listening to the audiobook, I am probably going to buy the physical book to use as a reference book for my coaching. And finally, the last book I'm technically currently reading, although I haven't picked it up in several months, is What to Do When You're Having Two, The Twin Survival Guide uh, by Natalie Diaz, uh, founder of Twiniversity. Um, and so far, this is really good. A lot of the stuff at the beginning is like prepping for having twins, which, you know, I'm obviously past at this point. Um, but there's lots of other useful stuff in here for after the twins are actually born. Um, so I do, I do want to read this. So let's dig into the TBR, the to be read, the things that I haven't started at all, or maybe started, but it was more than like a month or two ago. It was quite a while ago at this point and need to kind of start over. So the next audiobook that I want to get into is called Falling Back in Love with Being Human by Kai Cheng Tong. So I actually saw an Instagram quote from this book and that's what inspired me to get the audiobook. Um, and it was something about rage and the fact that yes, rage is useful. Yes, rage is, yes, rage is our call to justice. However, staying mad at the world forever is not a viable solution and not going to make you happy or helpful to others either. Even. The quote was much more eloquent than that. So I'm excited for that one. And then the other audiobook I have waiting for me is The Hundred Years War on Palestine by Rashid Khalidi. So I'm excited for that one, although it's obviously going to be a difficult read. I think it's also going to be a very meaningful read. And I do want to learn more. Next up is a Kindle read. So this one is called Holiday Romance by Katherine Walsh. It is adorable. It's another smutty romance book that I bought last Christmas, read last Christmas. It was great. And I am super ready to reread this one. Next up is I Want to Be Where the Normal People Are by Rachel Bloom. I am truly and deeply obsessed with Rebecca Bunch, uh, the character that Rachel Bloom, Bloom plays on the TV show Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I haven't actually finished the show because it's not always the best show for my mental health um, because it is so focused on mental health and everything. So I've never actually finished the show, um, but that show is really meaningful to me and that character in particular is really meaningful to me and I was curious about Rachel Bloom, the mind behind the character. So I got her memoir years ago at this point and I still have not read it, um, but I would really like to. The next one is Raising Good Humans, A Mindful Guide to Breaking the Cycle of Reactive Parenting and Raising Kind, Confident Kids by Hunter Clark Fields. And this is something I, I need to read. I know I need to read um, because I do have some cycles that I'd like to break and react parenting is probably one of the biggest things I'm like afraid of as a parent and as a result I tend to either be reactive or very permissive as a way to avoid being reactive neither of which are actually all that helpful for most kids but I tried reading this like two years ago and it was deeply triggering to me um, it it really brought up some shit and I couldn't keep going so I want to give it another shot but I'll be honest I'm nervous so this is a half price books find it's called creating money attract Abundance by Senea Roman and Dwayne Packer. Um, this is some manifestation stuff. I don't know how much of it I believe, but I also think there's some truth to it. So I wanted to learn more and I figure if I'm going to manifest, should manifest some cash. This is another one that I started literally 
I think two years ago. Uh, it's called The Body Is Not An Apology by Sonia Renee Taylor. If you guys don't know, because you kind of only see me from the neck up, I'm a plus sized gal. And I haven't always really loved that, especially because I wasn't always plus sized. And I think there are different struggles, you know, always having been bigger than the norm versus gaining weight later in life. I think those are just different struggles. So not trying to say that like my struggle is the struggle of like the fat person or whatever. It's almost like fat people are not a monolith. Um, but anyway, so I, I got this because I was having some trouble dealing with it and then I just didn't get around to actually reading it. Um, but uh, I love Sonia Renee Taylor. I follow her on Instagram. So that's been the more digestible way. I've been getting some of my body positivity and body neutrality. Um, but I am excited to read this. Next up, we have Mixed Signals by BK Borison. So this name might be familiar. She also wrote uh, Love Light Farms, the romantic smutty book from the beginning that I'm rereading, right? So she has a whole series that's like all about that universe. Um, and this one is a couple of the characters from Love Light Farms who also fall in love in a smutty way so that should be good again i tried reading this a while back and um couldn't get through it even though it's very good it's i want to just point out by the way that all of these books that i've like started and stopped and not been able to finish none of these books have been bad so far um they've all been very good i just have wild ADHD. Speaking of ADHD, I actually have an advanced copy of Jessica McCabe's book, How to ADHD, An Insider's Guide to Working with Your Brain, Not Against It. I am so happy that I got an advanced copy of this book and I am going to do my darndest to read as much of it as possible before it comes out so that I can offer reviews. If you want a video specifically about this book, go ahead and leave me a comment below. Just write How to ADHD. Jessica is the first neurodivergent content creator I ever followed I'm pretty sure and um, she taught me so much about my brain and even before I knew I had ADHD I was like well I don't have ADHD but some of this stuff is helpful um, so I'm gonna implement it and it was and it was amazing and now that I know I am ADHD it's it's just so beautiful what Jessica has done and she is still one of the only like truly huge ADHD YouTube channels that I know of anyway. She's the one I recommend to everybody. So in addition to being ADHD, I am also autistic. So let's dig into some of the autism books. Uh, first up, we have Different Not Less, A Neurodivergence Guide to Embracing Your True Self and Finding Your Happily Ever After by Chloe Hayden. If you don't know, Chloe Hayden is a TikToker, an actress, and just overall neurodivergent advocate. And this is her book. And I am really excited to give it a read. Actually, this was one of the books for our book club in the Neuro Spicy Club, which is my monthly membership. You can check it out in the description. Um, and I did not get around to reading it that month at all. But that's the nice thing about having a book club inside of a Neuro Spicy, neurodivergent friendly membership. It's fine if you don't read the book, you can still come to book club. Next up, I have Connecting with the Autism Spectrum, How to Talk, How to Listen, and Why You Shouldn't Call it High Functioning by Casey Remrov Vormer. So this book is more about like how to connect with people who are autistic. It's more written for people who aren't autistic to learn more. But because I am a neurodivergent life coach, I thought it might be helpful even for me to like, even though I am autistic, it might be helpful to sort of get the introductory guide to autism from another autistic person's point of view. Like what would an autistic person want me to know about being autistic? And like, sure, I have my idea of what I would want people to know, but what about Casey Vormer? What do they want people to know? So, and finally, we have Women and Girls with Autism Spectrum Disorder, Understanding Life Experiences from Early Childhood to Old Age. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the genderization of autism. This whole idea of female autism is very, very reductive in my opinion, and we can talk about that later on in another video. However, I do think it's really interesting to walk through an autistic person, regardless of gender, walk through their whole life from early life experiences to old age. It was that tagline that really got me with this book because we don't talk about aging autistic people because we only think of them as being children. And I think I, I just really wanted to hear about adulthood as an autistic person. And I am a woman and so I do identify with that. And it's not that it's harmful to talk about autism from the lens of being a woman. It's just that the whole idea of female autism is it reduces things unhelpfully in my opinion. But again, we'll dig into that in another video. So those are all the books that I want to read. But I also have some journals. 
So first is one that I have done a little bit of work on, and that is the I Am Autistic Workbook, Sensory Tools, Practical Advice, and Interactive Journaling for Understanding Life with Autism by Someone Diagnosed with It. First of all, it's gorgeous. Can we just like, the whole book is got like watercolor and doodles, and it's literally so great. Um, I have started filling this out, but I'm not too terribly far into it. Um, but from what I have done, I have really enjoyed it. Uh, I just, like I said, I just have wild ADHD and sitting down and focusing on anything is really hard. Oh, and the I Am Autistic Workbook is by Chanel Mariah. Next up, we have Tarot For Yourself by Mary Kay Greer. Uh, this is another one that I have done some work on and I have really thoroughly enjoyed. I love tarot, I love oracle cards, I love all things that are like vanilla witchy. I'm not like deep into like the occult, but give me some tools to dig into my intuition and my love for humanity and I am there. If you guys wanna see all of my decks, like my tarot decks, my oracle decks, all of that, just uh, comment tarot below and I'll make a whole video showing you guys those. But the tarot for yourself has been really cool. It shows you like how to do different types of readings like the Celtic cross and whatnot and, and how to do just a standard three card reading. Um, yeah, here, there's the Celtic cross. And just in general, I want to get back into pulling cards and journaling and reflecting and like I said, growing my intuition and my love for humanity. And finally, we have the Shadow Work Journal, second edition, a guide to integrate and transcend your shadows. So this has gone pretty viral on TikTok. I unfortunately bought it before it was like a dollar from TikTok shop. I paid full price like a fool, but I have been very much avoiding this journal um, because shadow work is hard work and I wanna do it, that's why I bought it, but I'm also very intimidated by it and I also kinda don't wanna do it. So I've been avoiding this journal, but I know I need to dig in because addressing your shadow is really the the only way to grow. Um, and if you don't know, your shadow is basically the parts of yourself that drive you that you kind of pretend aren't there. Like, you know, the people who say that emotions cloud your judgment, right? And they pretend that they're driven purely by logic. Their shadow is a very emotional being, probably a very emotional child that was punished for their emotions. And so it's a lot of trauma work and I've just kind of been avoiding my trauma work lately. You know, I haven't gone to therapy in like a month and I haven't filled out this journal. And so I know I need to do these things. Um, but there is a part of me that's like, I could just wait until I crash and burn. But I know I don't wanna do that. So I will schedule a therapy session. I will start on this journal. I will do the things. So yeah, this is my TBR and I love it very much. I wish that I had the capacity to read more. I wish my TBR was a little shorter, but then again, I don't. I'm glad I have a nice long TBR. It means that I still have interests. It means I still have passion. Even though I struggle with the focus aspect of reading and everything, it means that I still give a shit about my interests, which is important to me. P.S. You don't have to have a long TBR to demonstrate your interest in your hobbies, by the way. That's just a good indicator for me as a person. So let me know in the comments some of the books on your TBR and I will see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.